Welcome back to uh, You Can Homeschool. And today I have the uh, privilege and uh, opportunity to interview uh, Gina Mayo. And uh, Tracy, of course, will not be with us today. So uh, we'll be just, I'll just be carrying the ball. But I'll give you a little background on Gina and then I'll let her uh, fill in the gaps. Uh, she's a homeschooling mom of eight, bless her heart, as we say in the South. <laughs> Of, from over 25 years. So um, she gets us, you know what I'm saying? She's got a, a bachelor's in music and a master's in voice pedagog pedagogy, pedagogy. Yes, that's right. And she's taught private lessons and early childhood programs and classes in elementary, junior high and high school. She did a lot of music education. And she's also a musical director for stage musicals. Uh, for, I guess, pretty much children's productions. Is that correct? Or Yes, the kids are eight to 18. Eight to 18. Great. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, one of our sons was an addict. He could be any sh any musical show that he could get into. He was he was doing it. So it's a lot of fun. So thank you, Gina, for being with us today. And um, if you want to go ahead and fill in anything that I've I've left out, that'd be fine. And kind of introduce yourself to our listeners. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I've been homeschooling the whole time, and I was a music teacher before that, and still am. I love teaching music, and one of my passions now is to help homeschoolers include music in their homeschools, um, because I know a lot of homeschool moms feel that they're not equipped, or they just don't know how to do it. They don't know what to do, and so I have a website where I try to help them in all different ways to be able to include music in their homeschools from preschool through high school. Mm -hmm. That's it. Soup to nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have to admit that I now I had a musical. I have a bachelor's degree in music, but when it came time to start you know, to, to, and we homeschooled the whole way through too. But once it came time to teaching my, my own kids, there was that kind of hesitancy and also feeling kind of overwhelmed with all the things, you know, right. what mm -hmm. that feeling is as well. Um, and, and I think too, that very often, like just the culture that we're in right now kind of looks at the fine arts as optional, you right. know, it's kind of like, well, it's not necessary, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, all that, you know, they're important, but um, maybe you could talk about now today's topic will be um, how to actually create or craft a fine arts program for specifically for your high school um, student, because that's kind of when the, the, um, the credits count, you know, if they're college bound, right, right. <clears throat> but in general, um, Gina, can you kind of speak to that a little bit about the importance of just music education in general for our kids? Yes, and fine arts as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get more specifically into what fine arts entails, but it definitely includes music. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it is so important for every high schooler to get a, at least one fine arts credit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what they're planning on doing after high school, if they're going to go straight into the workforce or the military or college. Um, it's really great for them to get a fine arts credit. And that could be something with theater or art or dance or music or some other things that I'll talk about in a bit. But um, it really helps them understand some things in the culture, like you might even see in movies or TV shows or uh, read in books. There's all, all kinds of allusions to different things that you would learn if you study fine arts, maybe composers or artists or famous paintings and things like that, uh, ballets. And if a student has never studied any of that, they won't get those references. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, a, it's such a good way to understand the connections with history and culture, um, just that the artists and the musicians, the composers, the writers were always influenced by what was going on around them, mm -hmm. um, whether they were in the midst of a war or a new country starting or um, just all kinds of different things throughout history. So it's really wonderful to uh, maybe study something like art history or music history and then connect it with the actual history studies that you're having mm -hmm. um, to see all those connections. 
Yeah, we Another, found that. Oh, yes, go ahead. I was going to say, for, for us, that was definitely the case. We found um, looking at history through that lens, through a, you know, a fine arts, a creative arts lens, really helped take the, the you know, we can just kind of look at that as a very dry study, you know, history, right. when, we, when we just have to memorize dates and events and all that stuff and, and people's names. But, you know, looking at it through a creative music or art was primarily what we focused on in our homeschool, really made it a much more interesting and full study, you know. For, for sure, history. yes. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason what I, one of my favorite parts about it is just to make all those kinds of connections. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, another great thing about getting an art, a fine arts credit is that it can ease, usually be an easy A class <laughs> for a kid. And I am all about having some of those classes because I know my kids are taking some really tough right. math and science and foreign language studies. And so it's great to mix it up and do something that's enjoyable, uh, mm -hmm. creative, or um, just, just something totally different from the other things that they're studying in right. high school. And I think exploring that too at this age while they're in high school really can set them up for a lifetime, not necessarily a career, although it, that's possible too, but um, just a healthy way to de-stress, to yes. relax, to explore their own creativity in a way that's not, uh, you know, not pressurized or stressful for them. Yes, very. Uh, the de-stress, we all need mm. that right now. Amen. <laughs> and music and art um, can be a great way to do that. Yeah. Well, and I have a friend who recently took up uh, pottery mm -hmm. and, she, and I went over uh, to her house and she has a wheel and everything. And I was amazed because it is kind of, it's definitely hands-on obviously and, and messy, but it is kind of freeing and creative. It's, it was a neat, yeah. something different to, to explore. So, yeah. So um, what would you say to to a mom who's like just totally you know the idea of either adding one more thing or just approaching any kind of fine arts training and feeling totally uh inept unprepared mm -hmm. what are some tips or, or, or some maybe mindsets too that you could share <clears throat> right so i know that unless you've studied some of those disciplines like mm -hmm. i never learned how to paint i wouldn't know how to teach my kids how to paint right but it doesn't matter what you want or what your child wants to learn, there are resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of free resources too. So that makes it great. I mean, YouTube, you can find anything oh my there gosh. for learning um, <laughs> some of these fine arts topics. So that's, I would just tell them not to worry about that. Um, you can find the teacher, the resources that you need. Um, that's not the hard part. <laughs> okay. And then as far as fine arts goes, so the big broad area that I just mentioned earlier was music, art, like the visual arts, right. um, dance and theater. But I, as I've studied this topic, found that you can really broaden that even more. And I have a list of some different things that you can do that you can count for fine arts in your homeschool. And uh -huh. then I'm going to tell you how to actually... Um, Create the class on your own if you didn't want to do like a, a full year music history course or something mm -hmm. that you can create it yourself. So let me tell you all the things that I think can be included for fine arts. Okay. Um, art lessons, voice lessons, piano, guitar, or any other instrument lessons, mm -hmm. church praise band or vocal group, choir, band, orchestra, music ensemble like a barbershop quartet or a jazz ensemble a string quartet or even a garage band oh. um, any kind of dance lessons like ballet lyrical jazz tap ballroom or praise dance drama productions drama camps filmmaking playing in or attending musical concerts like classical musical concerts mm -hmm. uh, attending ballets operas plays or musicals, visiting art museums, art galleries, and local art fairs, a music theory class, music appreciation or music history class, an art appreciation or art history class, music recording and producing, a virtual choir participate for participation, photography, drawing, painting, pottery, leatherworking, jewelry making, 
ceramics, printmaking, and sculpting, reading about and studying artists, composers, musicians, dancers, or actors, video production, script writing, play writing, or screen writing, audio editing, poetry study and poetry recitation, 3D design, graphic art, animation, songwriting and music composition, acting and pantomime. Oh, let me go to the next page. Musical theater class and performance, technical theater and stagecraft, improvisation in theater, music or dance, puppetry, fashion design, including costume history, textile and fiber arts, and architecture history and design. So I think that one of the hardest <laughs> things for some of these homeschool moms is they think, my kid doesn't like anything for fine arts. But if you look at that kind of comprehensive list, there's probably something on there that a child would be interested in. Oh, that is, that's an amazing, you know, you mentioned earlier, and I was going to follow up on you with this. You said, that's not the hard part. And then we didn't pursue that. Uh -huh. But I think I understand what you, what you may have been leading to, because the hard part to me now sounds like, how do you pick something? Because <laughs> that was like three minutes of just straight list. <laughs> yes. There's, it's so much broader than it has to be. Now, I would say you need to check your state requirements because maybe there's some states that say fine arts needs to be more narrow. Right. Um, but most of them don't have a very narrow, some of them don't even require it at all on their high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So you can make the choice yourself. And mm -hmm. All, all high school diplomas include electives. So right. These can be counted as that too. So I always um, encourage, I always encourage parents if they know their child is college bound to start looking at the, what the college requirements are, because yes. even if the high school doesn't necessarily require it, they may need it. Like you need two languages, you know, for, for some mm -hmm. colleges and stuff. So, yeah. Right. And if a student does want to go into one of those disciplines in college, they really should be taking some of them in high school. Oh, yes. Like if they want to be a music major, for sure take music history and music theory in mm -hmm. high school, that, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Right, right. But I had a son who wanted to study and is studying mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. but he found it very fun to learn graphic design. Mm -hmm. So he studied that and that was his uh, fine arts credit mm -hmm. in high school. So even some of your kids that you'd say are not fine artsy types at all, right? Um, maybe they'd be interested in video production mm -hmm. or graphic design or um, editing some of those kinds of things or maybe yeah. 3D design because that you know like with a 3d printer right a little mm -hmm. bit more more um maybe less art or oriented like you think with painting or right mm -hmm. but and it's a little bit more to the engineering side but i think a lot of kids would enjoy that yeah and and you know a, there was a bunch of them as as you were going down that list that i thought you know you could even tweak them i mean they could become a technical type of thing you know mm -hmm. certainly the design uh, what were you saying that your your son who wanted engineering is interested right. in engineering you know video design and things like that definitely can apply and 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 you know be a part of that that's that's really neat and so um, that are interested in computer science they might like the animation yeah that type of thing yeah there's so much so much for so many options so many opportunities there in that list yeah that really kind of opens the door a little bit so how, how would you, so how do you, how do you suggest narrowing it down for someone who doesn't have a clue what their, their child might like, or I guess. Well, I would, yes, I would definitely have the child look at the list right. for themselves to see what they would like to do mm -hmm. um, and see what sparks an interest for them. That's where I would start. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they will find something on the list that they would like to do. And if they don't, I would still say they need to pick something right. <laughs> or you're going to pick it for them because just like my children that are like my daughter, who's going to be a nail tech, she doesn't want to take algebra, but I'm still ma making her take algebra because that's important right. for her life. So mm -hmm. even these kids that don't like fine arts at all, they need to take something. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an elective. It's not yeah, like right. you're saying. Mm -hmm. 
it, it, it allows them to become a better well-rounded person. There's, yes. you know, that's really, we, we definitely need well-rounded thinkers and people. Yes, we do. It's coming up. Definitely. So, um, so, okay. So you talked about, or you mentioned earlier about putting a program together. How, how my, assuming then we have a student, we have a teenager who knows what they want to do. Um, and we want to try to craft a program for them. What kind of elements would you recommend to be in a fine arts program? Okay, so first I would say, make sure that you're not counting it as a, in two different areas. So if your daughter is really into ballet and she's taking ballet lessons, you couldn't count that as both a PE credit, physical education uh -huh. and fine arts, you wanna pick one. Mm -hmm. Or if they're singing on the praise band at church, um, you wouldn't want to count that as an extracurricular activity and a, giving a grade for a fine arts credit. Gotcha. And you, you need to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. And then the next year you could choose something else if you wanted, if they take it again mm -hmm. as, in another year. But that's one thing I would say. Um, second is if it's a class that is through a book, like a textbook that mm -hmm. says it's a high school credit book, or an online course, or they're taking a class in the community that mm -hmm. says it's high school level. And um, you can just use that and mm -hmm. say that that is going to be your full credit or your half credit if they do it for one semester. Mm -hmm. But if you're just making it up on your own, then mm -hmm. usually a full year credit is about 120 to 180 hours. Right. And so you would need to have your student um, track the hours that they're spending on it. Mm -hmm. For example, my oldest son was a singer and he was taking voice lessons and he was in a voice class and then he practiced a lot at home as well. Mm -hmm. So I just told him just track all of those hours um, of when you're at, at the class, um, at the voice lesson and practicing at home. And it actually added up to a full year credit. Wow. If I had just... Um, thought it in my mind, I would think that's probably only a half credit. It's probably not that much, but it really was a lot. So if they're actually marking it down and tracking the hours, you can mm -hmm. see um, that you, how long it needs to be to actually get that credit. Mm -hmm. And if you are, so that was a voice credit, but if you're like dabbling in different things, like maybe you have a daughter who's taking some piano lessons and um, she's learning to paint and she's um, going to some concerts, some classical concerts. And so it's kind of a mixture of some mm -hmm. different things. Then again, you can track all the hours and maybe call it something like fine arts. Mm -hmm. And then you would say in the course description, what exactly she studied and how long she worked on each of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's there's a good amount of latitude that we have mm -hmm. as homeschoolers in, in terms of that. And something the way you did the second thing that you described with the, you know, dabbling in different areas is a great way to, um, you know, have your have your team accomplish the the uh, course or the the uh, credit, but but still dabble in things and kind of explore right. different areas, mm -hmm. you know, rather than feeling committed to one. That's re that's really great. Okay, what I have to say, when I've been looking into your membership, I know you have a membership for uh, a fine arts membership for high schoolers. Yes. I know you, you have one for elementary too, I know, but um, being that I have a high schooler, that's and my youngest right. one is a high schooler. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I really looked into that. I love, love, love. You have something called uh, master classes. Is that what? Yes. Yeah, that's talk right. about those. I love sure. them. I have found some master teachers in some of these disciplines that I could not teach, mm -hmm. like dance, um, tap dance, and um, Hispanic dance. And let's see when we, if I can remember off the top of my head, I have one where um, a man teaches you how to play a song on the guitar. There's a lady that teaches a song on the ukulele. Mm -hmm. um, there's several art lessons. Right. Um, and then there's a couple that are about theater. Like if you're interested in becoming a theater major, what you need to do during high school to prepare for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then another lady talks about Shakespeare and how to actually like do a, 
practice and learn about in order to uh, perform a Shakespeare monologue. Mm -hmm. So I really love those um, master classes because they're usually about 30 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. but there's enough work in there that you would need to continue to work on it. You don't just sit right. there and watch it. Um, it will take you longer than an hour if you're actually working on it, like learning the dance or doing the art project or learning how to play that song right. or to sing that particular uh, technique that you're being taught. Mm -hmm. So those are fun. Um, I think I only have one more to add to that. And then mm -hmm. that course will be complete. So it'll be mm -hmm. the Fine Arts Master Classes course. Yes, that is that's so interesting. And it's I just love how it's all different. It's different. Uh, you know, uh, types of, of art, you know, mm -hmm. so you can, people can really just get a, a taste of things. So I love right. it. So, um, so when, so assuming a mom's like, you know, this sounds good. Somebody it's kind of like we can, I can hand my student over to somebody right. to, to do the fine arts credit. And I don't have to worry about coming up with something on my own or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. How, do, how does your fine arts membership work for a, for a teenager? Okay, so if they wanted to join the membership, which will be open again in January, but mm -hmm. they could get on the wait list, mm -hmm. um, they can choose from those master classes. There's also an advanced music theory course. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit more specialized, would need to be for someone who already knows some music theory. Right. And then there's um, a Shakespeare course where they can uh, start learning a little bit about Shakespeare and how to pronounce the language uh -huh. and memorize. And um, they read uh, from Shakespeare's Star Wars, which is a book <laughs> written. It's Star Wars stories written in Shakespearean language. It's really fun. So I did that at a, a homeschool co-op that I taught and the students loved it. That's so it was good. kind of like a, a really easy way to get into Shakespeare, which I know can be kind of intimidating for some people. Mm -hmm. And then I have uh, three music history courses. So it starts at the beginning of music history, which would be about the Middle Ages mm -hmm. and goes all the way through modern times. So that is a very easy course for a student to do on their own because mm -hmm. they're just looking at the lessons and listening to the music, um, filling out a notebooking page about what they're hearing in the music so they can analyze it a bit. So that is a really easy one. And then there's a Charlotte Mason inspired fine arts mm -hmm. course in there where they're learning a little bit of, of composer study, picture study, and poetry study. Mm -hmm. um, and just a very simple way to uh, learn some fine arts. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Now I know um, by the time this comes out, this will be around around the holidays. So you okay. have the, the uh, last piece, from what I understand, of your music lessons, which is uh, Christmas carols made easy, uh, yes. which I got to look at. And you know what I love about that is, uh, you know, you think Christmas carols, and to me, I, you just have the idea it's too easy to use for 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 fine arts, you know. Uh huh. Uh, but I love how you are actually teaching in that course, uh, you know, vocal uh, rest and vocal exercises. I mean, you are really teaching the kids how to sing. It's yes. just using the tool of uh, uh, Christmas carols, which really make it very friendly and, you know, not intimidating. <laughs> exactly. Right. So they will be learning how to sing better, increase yeah. their range and learn how to take longer um breaths for a phrase and all kinds of different things for singing mm -hmm. and the foreign language a couple of songs are in foreign yeah. language so you teach where you have access to how to how to teach the pronunciation and stuff which mm -hmm. is really important so you french know. german spanish and italian mm -hmm. there you go that's the big opera ones right <laughs> yes, <they are. laughs> now i want to go back really quickly to you mentioned you've mentioned a couple of times referred to uh, Shakespeare. And that's actually how I discovered you because uh, oh. one of our kids took the, your Shakespeare course. And, um, but I'm just intrigued kind of like, what's the, what's the connection between music and Shakespeare? Because most of your other stuff is, is music related. <laughs> um, and then there's Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, that? there's, there's not really a connection. Okay. Um, most of the stuff at, at learn.music and our homeschool.com is, is specifically music. But right. I couple of other courses there and Shakespeare's one of them and it's because I wrote it for my homeschool co-op to teach it 
And then I thought other people might want to use it too. So I'll just put it on there. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. <laughs> if you haven't looked into that, if you're intimidated by, listen, if you're intimidated folks by, by doing music, you may be intimidated by teaching Shakespeare and Gina makes it fun. I mean, really, it's, it's great. You should uh, definitely try that out. And I'll probably do a review of that one just to, to give people okay. an idea of that. Cause it was, um, it was really a great program for our family. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, gosh, this has been really good. I'm trying to think we, we still have a few more minutes. Is there anything else you want to encourage uh, really parents who might be feeling a little anxious about fine arts uh, just to, to encourage them? I, I think that I have said everything that I wanted to say. So I will just use that the last few minutes to do the encouragement, mm -hmm. which is to say, don't be afraid. You can find the resources for it. Um, you can even come up with something yourself that works for you and your child. It's not that hard. And you just write out the course description and the college will be happy to see what you've learned. Yes. And actually at these days to just to, to uh, confirm or affirm what you're saying uh, back in the day when our older ones were going, and this was probably the case with you when they were first starting to go to college, colleges were very kind of, ah, you were homeschooled, like, you know, and, and looking at your grades, well, your mom gave you an A kind of, you know, very kind of down, you know, looking down mm -hmm. their noses. Uh, but over the years, you know, homeschool students have definitely proven that uh, this type of education, this approach to learning uh, has, is, is a benefit to them. And it's a benefit to the schools and to the students, the other students in her class, because your student will probably emerge as a leader and uh, maybe a thought leader and certainly a different approach to learning and work ethic. So yes. um, I would definitely, it, you know, just agree to what Gina's saying, you know, that we, you can do it and embrace the ability or you know, the, the opportunity to be creative and, um, and develop that creativity in your children as well at the same time. And I will give you a link so that people can find a, the list of all the things that I mentioned um, so that they can go there to that link. Yeah, that was a long list and I, I, you'd have to keep <laughs> hitting pause and write some. Right. Thank you for providing that. We'll have that in the show notes and I'll have uh, Gina's contact information too uh, in the show notes, as well as the links to her um her programs and music in our homeschool, which definitely something to at least consider. So Gina, thank you again for your time. I know you're a very busy woman and I really appreciate uh, your time here. I know you, you're coming up with a show. You're directing a show that's coming up as we're recording this, right? Yes. Uh, the, uh, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, that's right. Doing it next week, yep. Yeah. Good, well, good luck with that. Thank that's you. Awesome show. And uh, stay tuned, you know, because I'll be doing other reviews. As I said, I'm, I am going to do a review for uh, Gina's uh, Shakespeare course, which I really love. So you can get more information on that. But thank you for joining us uh, this week again at You Can Homeschool. And I will remind you as we close today, I give you Tracy's reminder that you can homeschool and it can be a fabulous lifestyle. So we will see you back here again or listen to you back here again next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.